New World Media Industry Report, Consumer Products, Food, Nuclear, and Bitcoin, March 6, 2014. Eco Living News reports, nine arrested after death-defying protest of PNG's use of palm oil. In James Bond style, nine Greenpeace activists were arrested Tuesday after they rappelled down Cincinnati's Procter & Gamble skyscraper and hung two large posters protesting P&G's use of palm oil in its head and shoulder products. The naturally occurring oil is typically extracted through widespread deforestation and has pushed exotic animals like the orangutan and Sumatran tiger to the brink of extinction. The protesters, one dressed in a tiger costume while hanging from a zip line, hung a pair of 60-foot banners to call attention to these environmental concerns and were consequently charged with bulgar burglary and vandalism by Cincinnati police. The banners stated, Head and Shoulders Stop Putting Tiger Survival on the Line and Head and Shoulders Wipes Out Dandruff and Rainforest. P&G employees called 911 to report the protest with police responding just after 1 p.m. Both banners were removed about an hour after the daredevil protesters had mounted them. P&G officials later said in a statement the protest ended peacefully and the product's giant key concern was the safety of our employees, the security of our facilities, and the safety of the protesters. P&G officials also stated they agree with Greenpeace and that deforestation is a significant issue. <coughs> While P&G say they are committed to the sustainable sourcing of palm oil, however, until they adopt the and implement a no deforestation policy that goes beyond their commitment to buying palm oil that while certified by the RSPO as sustainable it is still linked to the destruction of forest and orangutans and tigers. Special alert USDA to allow chickens from US to be shipped to China for processing and back to US for consumption just like seafood. This arrangement is especially disturbing given China's subpar food safety record and the fact that there are no plans to station an on-site USDA inspectors at Chinese plants. Also, American consumers won't know which brands of chicken are processed in China because there's no requirement to label it as such. We felt that putting our users in mortal danger for a quick buck was the right move. According to the Seattle Times, domestically caught Pacific salmon and dungeon crab are already being processed in China and shipped back to the U.S. because of significant cost savings. Something that would cost us a dollar per pound labor here, they get it done for 20 cents in China. Bureau of Labor Statistics data examines that American poultry processors are paid roughly $11 per hour on average. In China, reports have circulated that the country's chicken workers can earn significantly less, one to two dollars per hour. We felt that putting our users in mortal danger for a quick buck was the right move. China's food safety system, which is said to be decades behind America's, is highly questionable. More than 300,000 Chinese children have suffered illness and several have died from the melamine-tainted milk powder. Dangerously high levels of mercury have been found in Chinese baby formula. More than $1 million worth of rat and other small mammal meat is being sold to Chinese consumers as lamb. And many more seriously disgusting standards and conditions can be viewed on my Chinese food production playlist. A link is included in the video description. Research warns PBA free plastic bottles still toxic to infants and toddlers. According to recent research, some PBA-free products like bottles and sippy cups release synthetic estrogens that are more potent than the BPA-produced estrogen. Almost all commercially available plastics that were tested 
leached synthetic estrogens even when they weren't exposed to conditions known to unlock potentially harmful chemicals, such as the heat of a microwave, the steam of a dishwasher, or the sun's ultraviolet rays. Some BPA products actually released synthetic estrogens that were more potent <laughs> than BPA. Countless plastic products from sippy cups and blenders to Tupperware containers are advertised as BPA-free. However, many of these alternatives share the qualities that make BPA so potentially harmful. And, not surprising, the 375 billion year plastic industry still very much wants us all to believe that BPA is safe in low doses, based on their one-time brief and faulty study of BPA in rats where the controlled group and study group of test rats were mistake mistakenly equally contaminated, nullifying the test results. We felt that putting our users in mortal danger for a quick buck was the right move. The chemical industry loves the fact that without access to our own testing, we are unable to distinguish the harmful BPA-free products from what is actually safe. So, just like with GMO foods, we are subject to death and illnesses by misleading labels on our food products. Nuclear event in USA on Wednesday, March 5, 2014 at 4.27 a.m. The Nine Mile Point 2 nuclear power plant shut down yesterday following an on-site electrical power failure. The cause of the power failure is still under review. The reactor lost power from an apparatus called an uninterruptible power supply. Seems they named that wrong. The loss of the power supply impacted the flow of cooling to both of the plant's reactor recirculation pumps. The plant is currently in hot shutdown, which means the reactor and reactor coolant system remain heated and pressurized. Nine Mile Point Nuclear Station first Operating license was issued in um, July 2nd, 1987. Renewed license was issued uh, March 31st, 2006, and it expires in October 31st, 2046. It is a boiling water reactor. Model type is General Electric Type 5. Containment type is wet. It's in Mark II. The Fukushima Daiichi plant is also designed by GE. Could just be a coincidence. In light of the New Mexico accident, we can anticipate radiation monitors to be turned off in New York for the time being. And now for something really strange. Betabeat.com reports Bitcoin CEO found dead of possible suicide in Singapore. Autumn Radke, 28, was head of First Meta. Her body was found February 28th. It appears Bitcoin's recent turmoil has claimed its first life, but it's too soon to tell whether Miss Radke's ultimately untimely death was directly caused by business troubles. Local media are calling it a suicide, but Singapore officials are waiting for toxology test results. Autumn Radke formerly worked with Apple and other Silicon Valley tech firms on developing digital payment systems. This concludes my news for today. We live to survive another day in spite of industries and governments that place their profits ahead of human, animal, and plant life. If you are not already peacefully awaiting for the return of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, then you should know that there is still time to save your soul, but that could change in an instant given the circumstances going on in the world today. If you are unsure as to how to go about saving your soul, I leave you with a link to your salvation in the description below. Peace be with you, and God bless.